This conference will now be recorded. Hello, everybody. My name is Patrick Gilchrist. I'm the Warning Coordination Meteorologist with the National Weather Service in Glasgow. Uh, also on the line is Tom Frieders, who is my counterpart down with the Billings, Montana National Weather Service office. Uh, we're here today to talk and uh, discuss our seasonal and drought uh, briefings with a tailor towards agriculture here going forward. So thanks for attending. So if you lived in eastern Montana for any amount of time, you know that we have a pretty dramatic climate and that things can shift very quickly. Uh, top left image here is from fall of 2016. We had a very uh, unusual, very rare uh, fall flooding event where we got heavy precipitation and that caused uh, the Milk River and several other um, rivers to rise up into its banks and out of its banks in some cases, as you see on the image. But we also followed that up very quickly with uh, an incredible dry period, an unprecedented dry period as we've got towards the uh, winter time and then into the spring and eventually the summer of 2017, we had our flash drought. And so eight months from flooding, uh, we were dealing with, uh, you know, uh, incredibly dry conditions, stunted crop growth, as you see there on the image, uh, big cracks in the ground that formed up as a result of the uh, drying clay soils and all sorts of uh, problems and impacts due to the abnormally dry or drought conditions that we were seeing. And our unofficial motto at the Weather Service in Glasgow is this quote from uh, Jim Ray, who is our former meteorologist in charge. He's now retired, but uh, um, in Northeast Montana, where we are always two weeks away from from a flood and two weeks away from a drought. I think that captures uh, our climate variability uh, quite nicely and uh, really sums up what life is like out here. So I, I got this image from the Montana Climate Assessment, which is a great document and you can feel free to Google for it. Uh, it's got a lot of incredibly uh, valuable information in it, uh, but I think it does a really good job in in summarizing just how important climate and weather is to all aspects of an agriculture um, operation in Montana. You can see that climate factors into everything from government prices, uh, expected, uh, expect, excuse me, government policies, expected prices received for crops, um, your product inputs and what pests might be available. Uh, climate and weather factor into all those and they also factor into all the decisions that are going to be made for an agricultural operation um, just based on, um, on what uh, the hand is that you're dealt and, and what decisions you have to make for your ag operation. So I think it does a really good job in, in showing how important climate and weather is to agriculture in Montana. So a quick look back on how we got here, uh, you know, looking at November, December and January uh, of the, the, the winter months and even the late fall months. And you can see we were, you know, very, very dry. Um, out of 126 years, the state of Montana fit, finished 125th driest. Um, so that, that really does a good job in showing that we were only one year off of the uh, the record for that period. Um, and when we look at the out into the Dakotas, they were at the record um, driest period for on record for November through January. Um, you can see very much bullseyed out in the North and South Dakota. They set a lot of records here by county. Um, you can see a few counties in Montana also set some records, Prairie County and then up towards the uh, uh, Glacier County and uh, the, the Front Range there, uh, you know, definitely saw some dry conditions and again, set some records there. But, uh, you know, by and large, this does a good job of summarizing just how dry it was during that period. Of course, February came around and uh, things changed pretty dramatically, um, especially on the temperature side. Um, we, we can see where we were, uh, you know, 15th coldest on record. And you can see that we had that big Arctic blast that extended all the way southward into Texas and uh, brought much below uh, average conditions, not quite records, but uh, certainly close. I know a, a lot of uh, individual daily records were set uh, during this time frame. But, you know, this happened uh, um, roughly a week into the month of February. We saw this big Arctic, out, uh, Arctic blast. And you can see that, uh, again, uh, we went from being way above normal temperature wise to well below normals and uh, came as a pretty dramatic shift. Um, looking at precipitation, you can see that again, um, precip wise, you know, we were very dry again for this period, November through January. You know, typically when we have those warm months, um, they do tend to be on the dry side. And uh, these, this, this period was certainly um, uh, in line with that. And you can see that again, 16th driest for the state of Montana, Wyoming 10th driest, uh, North Dakota 4th driest. And when we break it down by county, 
you can see some uh, individual records set there in northwest South Dakota. And then, of course, McKenzie County, North Dakota stands out here um, with the record dry conditions during November through January. And you can see, again, much below normal for much of eastern Montana and southeast Montana. And even uh, getting in towards central and even portions of western Montana, feeling those dry conditions uh, um, for the early part of the winter. February, of course, uh, with that Arctic blast actually came some precipitation. However, uh, some areas got it and some areas didn't. And that's what's a little bit deceiving about the statewide rankings. You can see that uh, Montana was 101st wettest, finished above average as a whole. However, when you break it down by county, you can see that you know areas along the western reaches of the High Line and then down towards South Central uh, Montana and then of course Western Montana they got the precipitation. However, unfortunately for us in the east side, you know Northeast and Southeast Montana, um, we didn't get precipitation with that that big uh, cold push. And uh, you can see conditions again for for us in in Northeast and those folks in Southeast Montana um, very much remained on the dry side. And you can see that North Dakota finished uh, 12th driest. Um, overall. So again, that's probably more in line with uh, what we actually saw across uh, much of eastern Montana. However, um, like I said, south central Montana did all right with this. Uh, Billings got some really good precipitation out of this, much needed precipitation. Um, but uh, for those of us who didn't get it, things remain very much on the dry side. So a quick recap of December, January, and February. I think this captures it uh, very well, you know, adjusting um, to get um, November out of it, but just looking at the core December, January, and February winter months. You can see a lot of uh, uh, Northeast Montana, uh, McCone, Garfield, excuse me, McCone, Dawson, Richland, Roosevelt, and Valley Counties all, all saw record dry conditions during this time frame for the winter. Uh, much below average conditions, you know, for Phillips, Daniel Sheridan, um, down into southeast Montana as well. Um, you know, again, very much on the dry side. And uh, I think that this captures kind of our current situation pretty well, um, where we have uh, the most concerns for drought. So quick look at uh, where we're at for so far for the month of March. And you can see departure from normal temperatures. Again, uh, we've continued that overall trend from the winter. Um, with the well above average temperatures you can see especially in the east side and the, the northern tier of montana you know anywhere from six to um, upwards of 12 plus degrees above normal for that period for the month so far for the month and looking at uh you know the, the nation as a whole you can see that uh, the, again the dakotas and the minnesota again finishing on the, the very much on the warm side um, for for march uh, precipitation wise for march uh, again, very dry. You can see some spotty precipitation totals uh, down in South Central Montana. Again, um, some areas got hit, some areas didn't, uh, but by and large, Eastern Montana, you know, finishing uh, well below 50% of normal precipitation, and in some cases, uh, um, closer to zero. That shows up nicely on this na uh, national map. Um, you can see some areas below 2% of, of normal precipitation, um, kind of north of Fort Peck Lake along the Canadian border. Um, again, we just haven't seen much in the way of precipitation at all um, for the month of March, and uh, that's really continuing the dry trend from the, the winter months. So a quick climate snapshot looking specifically at Glasgow and Billings, where we have those, uh, those aviation weather sensors at the airports that uh, do a really good job in recording weather. Um, this really shows the, the tail here. We'll start around on the Glasgow on the left side here. Um, you can see that we got hit pretty good in the middle of October. And then again, the uh, earlier part of November, we got two big winter storms and, and that has really helped save us so far for this water year, this water year starting October 1st. Um, you can see these big steps here is where we got that precipitation and that pushed our totals you know, above average. Um, and that's really carried us because you can see that after that second snowstorm in November, we are largely flatlined precipitation wise, I mean, a couple of very small events in there, but by and large, everything's flatlined uh, since that time frame. And we've really not received um, significant precipitation since that time frame. And again, you know, so basically since the middle of November, we have been in a, a pretty substantial drought. We just have not received the precipitation um, that we, we so desperately need. Uh, Billings, on the other hand, uh, you can see by their steps, they've had definitely some dry periods here, um, but 
you know, by and large, uh, every month or so, they've picked up a, a good precip event, which has kept their totals working upward. And you can see early February that that good snowstorm really lifted them up um, precip wise. And again, they're they're sitting pretty good, uh, you know, 4.91 inches um, when their average should be somewhere around four. So they're actually above average in precipitation. So Billings is in much better shape. That whole south central section of the state is in much better shape than say the southeast or, or northeast uh, sections of Montana. So um, I think that does a good job in capturing. It's also worth noting here that you can see how our temperatures uh, for the winter were very much on the warm side, you know, up into the red here, we were above average, well above average temperature. And then when we got into February, um, you can see that huge drop that occurred and took us well below normal um, temperature wise and even uh, close to some records down in Billings. So, um, this graph uh, is, uh, again, kind of a, a neat um, uh, way to view data and uh, shows a, a lot of what's been going on here um, for Glasgow and Billings. So looking a little bit uh, bigger picture of portions of northeast Montana, um, we got portions of uh, south central and southeast Montana down, um, down in this lower section, and then we've got a little bit in central Montana, Great Falls, Haver, Lewistown. And it shows some of the tail again since October 1st for the for the water year precipitation totals. Um, and again, keep in mind that there was that one big storm there in uh, middle of October that uh, has has trended some of our precipitation totals higher. Like for example, Glasgow, you know, sitting at 93% of normal. Um, we know that um, while that is true since October 1st, we also know that uh, basically the months of November, December. January and February were very much on the dry side and we we did not see uh, much in the way of precipitation. So, um, you know, those those early season snow totals are, are really uh, affecting our, our percent of normal here a little bit. But if you look up here towards the top, you know, Plentywood 63% of normal, um, Scobie for Northwest 45% of normal, uh, Circle 50% of normal, Weibo 40% of normal. You can really see just how dry it's been for, for most of, of Northeast Montana, get down here towards uh, Mile City. Again, 71% of normal, 30% uh, below um, what we would expect for totals. Baker, 45% of normal. It just uh, shows you just how dry it's been. Um, and we certainly have a, a lot of concerns, uh, you know, going towards these spring months that hopefully uh, we can wring some precipitation out. Um, current snow depth, you can see not a lot of snow at all down on the plains here in eastern Montana. We should have a little bit of snow. Um, I'll show you a graphic here, just a second here, that should um, show what we should have still melting off. But unfortunately, you know, really this has been the tail. Those early season snows that we got uh, did not last. Uh, they evaporated. They weren't able to really uh, penetrate down. So we did not see our, our groundwater recharge that we would hope to get uh, usually in the spring with the, the snow melt. And uh, we didn't see much in the way of rises or uh, on streams or rivers at all. It was very much a, um, a dud, I guess, as it were, as far as the snow melt goes. So it's good news we didn't have any flooding, but uh, bad news that, uh, again, we didn't see any runoff to, to really recharge that groundwater. And this is our departure from normal snow depth. And I think this shows that, you know, out in eastern Montana, we should uh, in a lot of areas, we should have a few inches of snow left on the ground still, you know, at the, on this date, um, getting towards the latter part, part of March. We should be still melting off a little bit of snow. Again, we should still see rises on creeks and streams. And uh, with the lack of snow cover, um, we're just not going to see that. Um, the flip side of this, though, is that the mountain snowpack is actually in really good shape. Um, by and large, uh, across the board here, you know, we're near 100%. Uh, um, you know, the upper Yellowstone's at 103% of normal. Uh, Muscle Shell, Smith, Smith and Judith, uh, 96%. Milk River, 93% of normal. St. Mary's, 85%. Hopefully, again, we get some storm systems through here uh, um, uh, during the, the latter portion of the spring and help really kind of ramp that up. But by and large, I don't think we can complain. You know, even though we've been very dry out on the plains, the mountains did get the snow. It was a very heavy and wet snow. Um, when they did get it because of the warm temperatures and and again i think we're we're sitting in really good shape as far as uh, irrigation um, looks uh, for this uh, spring and into the summer now we'll turn it over to tom we're, we'll talk about the start with the drought all right thanks patrick yeah so um all those observed conditions how does that translate into the current drought situation here's a national map where we can get a good sense of 
the drought conditions across the whole United States there. And, and one particular area that really stands out is the Southwest US with those deep reds of exceptional drought conditions. But there you see the uh, severe to extreme drought conditions extending from the into the Northern Plains and into portions of Montana and Wyoming. So on the next slide, we zoom into uh, Montana and into uh, North Dakota there. You can see the widespread drought conditions, extreme drought conditions across Northwest North Dakota. And then that begins to nose into the Eastern part of Montana, lining up real well with the observed lack of precipitation that Patrick already talked about in that area. So uh, we can see, you know, quite an extensive area of severe to a little bit of extreme drought across far Northeast Montana into south into the southeast part of the state too. And you can certainly see the gradient too with slightly better conditions once you extend to the south central areas around Billings that has received some beneficial moisture at times. And for drought status, uh, those links at the top, if you have impacts out there, we encourage you to click on those links and report your drought conditions that you're seeing or, or ag impacts that you're seeing. Those conditions, observed conditions on the ground, really help us out in uh, future conditions on this drought monitor. So we invite you to click on those links and, and report the conditions you are seeing out your window. So now I get into a little bit of the forecast aspect into the short term first. This goes out through the next seven days. The map there on the right is forecast precipitation amounts. So either rain or, or melted snow. And sure enough, there you see a lot of white area right in the uh, North Dakota, Eastern Montana area, indicating really not much in the way of precipitation in the forecast. There are some areas of some light greens, uh, but that's only a few hundred. So you know, we'll, we'll have a little bit of an unsettled pattern uh, through the rest of this week. Most of that precipitation, though, is going to fall in the form of snow in the mountains. Uh, that's going to be the main impact area. And so the lower elevations, anything we're going to see is going to be on the light side. And then we do have a little bit of concern uh, with these dry conditions. Sunday, possibly into Monday, we got some windy conditions developing. And and certainly it'll be uh, well above normal temperatures on Sunday. So with these dry conditions, grass fires is also a concern out there. So we'll be monitoring that potential as well. As we get into next week in our eight to 14 day outlook, uh, the trends are a bit toward uh, a warmer and continued dry pattern. There you see the maps there, the temperature trends on the left and precipitation trends on the right. And the orange shades are that trend toward above normal temperatures. So this takes us uh, from the end of March through about the first week of April. So the core of warmest conditions again, they're right across the plains and into our Northern Rockies region. And then on the right there, you see lots of brown shades across well, actually much of the country, but certainly we're in the in the middle of that for below normal precipitation amount. So, so the pattern's not looking the greatest in the shorter term with continued overall dry and warmer conditions. And what does that indicate for our drought outlook? Uh, drought persists, basically. Those dark brown areas, current drought conditions, we're really not expecting any improvement uh, in a shorter term. So uh, with those uh, continued outlook trends, uh, not much in the way of improvement, but certainly we're in that time frame where our normal precipitation trends are on the way up. So April, May, and June start to trend up some of our wettest months of the year in our region. So it'll only take a few decent precipitation events uh, that we can kind of make up but quite a bit of deficit in these precipitation values if things line up just right. So we'll have to stay tuned for that. Into our three month outlook here. So these are basically the spring months into April, May, and then into the summer, June. Uh, temperatures again on the left and precipitation on the right. 
warm the uh, warm shades of uh, t somewhat trends toward above normal temperatures continuing through that period, and then uh, precipitation overall the uh, core of the driest conditions anticipated across the central Rockies, but that does show a tendency to to uh, kind of shift up into our area, so that'll have to be monitored. But again, we're, those, these are gonna be our wettest months, and so we'll have to monitor the short-term trends and see if we can get a few wet systems to come in. As we progress through the summer and into uh, September, uh, all of the entire CONUS indic indicating above normal temperature trends, and for precipitation on the right, uh, there you go, the Northern Plains and into Montana, that core of potential, greatest potential for below normal precipitation. So, so not a lot of favorable trends for us, uh, but again, these are outlooks and can, can change and we'll have to monitor those short-term trends and hopefully we can get a few wet systems in there. So now as we're talking about agriculture, we wanted to also advertise again, this uh, cold advisory for newborn livestock. Uh, these graphics are available both on the Glasgow and Billings National Weather Service websites. You can see the links there uh, on the bottom left. But uh, this has been going on for about 13 years now. And what this program is designed for is to indicate weather conditions that are dangerous to newborn livestock. So it takes into account things like wind chills and rain and wet snow, high humidities, making it you know difficult for, for the animals to dry off and, and or a combination of these elements. And we work in uh, sunny days versus cloudy days. So all that, all those parameters come together to produce uh, these criteria that rank conditions from none to moderate, severe, and extreme. And so as we head into the wetter months here, that's what we're gonna have to be uh, monitoring those conditions for newborn livestock. And here's some examples of what the graphics actually look like for South Central, Southeast Montana on our Billings National Weather Service website. And then on the right there, uh, up in the northeast part of the state. So you can see how it shades different conditions. So uh, the one on the left there is is one from our area where we've got some wet snow in the forecast into the mountains and foothills. So that's where you can see how the gradient changes to moderate, severe, extreme based on those conditions. So we invite you to visit those websites and, and learn more about this product and, and hopefully they can help out with your agricultural needs. So Pat, with that, Patrick and I would like to thank you for joining this uh, presentation today. Our contact information is available there. And also don't forget about those drought impact reporter links down there, report your drought conditions as you see them. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.